So in today's video, we're going to be comparing the GPDXP, the Odin Pro, and the Arbenic RG552. Let's get into this. So to get started, we're going to take a look at the design. I'm going to start with the GPDXP. And I have to say, this is a beautiful device. As you can see here, two analog stick. I love the fact that they are separated one up, one down. It has a decent D-pad, not my favorite, but good enough. And something you'll see here, it has Android keys. So again, if you're familiar with Android, the back, the home, and the menu button, and it has your X, A, Y, B. You have your select, you have your start. So on the bottom here, you have a USB. The cool thing about this device is you can put a micro SD card here and also a SIM card. So again, if you want to game on the go, especially for cloud gaming, this is pretty awesome. Up top, you have your volume rocker, you have your power button, you have your R1, R2, L1, L2. So something to know with the triggers is that they're not analog, which is kind of a bummer. You have your fan as well. So again, that's the design and something to know about this device is a modular device, meaning that you can take the side off and attach two other keys. But again, it doesn't apply to cloud gaming, so we're not going to cover that. So let's take a look at the Arbenic design. You have your D-pad up here and your analog stick, similar to like the PlayStation controller layout. Not my favorite for this device and we'll get into that in a bit. This one also has a Nintendo Switch like button layout with the YB XA here. Also not my favorite. And let's look at the bottom here. You have your dual speakers is what they call this. And I have to say it sounds really good. You have your micro SD card here. You have your home button here, which is kind of odd. And then your reset. So really, really cool. And you can add another SIM card here as well. So you can play around with it. You have your select, you have your start. So this is where I don't like this device. Okay. You have your fan here, but look at the L2 and R2 and L1 and L2 triggers here. It's kind of weird. Again, we'll get into some gameplay to showcase this. Not my favorite layout here. So you have your USB for charging here and you can also plug in another USB-C, which is neat. You have your headphone jack here and you have HDMI out. So if you want to use this device in your TV, you can as well. So taking a look at the back, this little grip. So again, this is designed for the Arbenic. So next we're going to take a look at the Odin and if you can't tell, this is probably one of my favorite design. I keep saying this is well made, well built. So you have your analog sticks here again, like the Xbox layout. You have your D-pad here. You have your Nintendo Switch type button here, but this uh, custom UI that lets you change this to be like a traditional Xbox controller. So like start on top, you have your L1, L2, R1, R2, you have your volume rocker, you have the power button, and you have a fan. Here, you have a micro SD card, and you have HDMI out here too, so you can plug this into a TV if you want as well. Back here, you have custom buttons. Again, you can customize this to what you want, and you have your speakers back here, and you have your fan up here. On the bottom, you have a USB-C for charging and a headphone jack as well. All right, so let's go over some of the specs for the Odin. This is a 5.98 inch screen. It's a 1920 by 1080 pixel. It's an IPS LCD. It has 369 PPI. It has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 processor. It has an Adreno 630 graphics card. It has eight gig of RAM. It, it comes with 128 gig of storage. It has HDMI and display port. It has stereo speakers. It has Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5.0. It has a 3.1 USB Type-C. It has a mini HDMI and it has 3.5 millimeter audio. It has a 6,000 mAh battery and it's running Android 10. And price-wise, this goes for $289 if you did the Kickstarter and it's going to retail for $323. Bucks. All right, so let's go over the specs for the GPDXP. So this has a 6.81 inch display. It's a 2400 by 1080 pixel. It has 338 PPI and it's an IPS LCD display. It has a MediaTek Helio G95 processor. It has six gigs of RAM. It has 128 gig storage. It has a 7,000 mAh battery. It has a 20 watt USB type C, Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5.0. 
and you can do 4G with this as well because it has a SIM slot. This also has a five megapixel camera and it's running Android 11 and it retails for 341 bucks. Last, we're gonna take a look at the Arbonic. This displays a 5.36, has an RX3399 hexa-core 64-bit processor, has a Mali T860 GPU, it has four gig of RAM, it has 64 gig of storage. It has high quality dual stereo speakers. It has two 3200 mAh battery and it has 2.4 gigs Wi-Fi, which is not the best for cloud gaming. And it has HDMI out and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. All right, so let's showcase some gameplay right here. I have Destiny 2 running on the Google Stadia platform. And something you notice right at the bat is how beautiful this display is. It's wide and I like that a lot. The analog stick feels pretty good and pretty responsive. Again, this is the only device out of these three that has analog triggers. So it's such a beautiful thing when you're playing first person shooter or a racer. So that's something to take into consideration here. And what differentiates this compared to its competitors is the fact that it has custom UI to where you can see your FPS count. You can check the cooling on this as well. Again, you can change the buttons here to match your traditional Xbox controller, even though it has a Nintendo Switch layout. I've tried all of the cloud gaming service on here and it runs really well. And again, you can go to my review video of this device and see all of that. The battery life in this device is incredible. And again, for 289 bucks for the Pro, this is one of my favorites. It runs all the cloud game platform pretty well. And I love the fact that it has analog triggers. So this is the GPDXP and I have a full in-depth review of this. So if you want to see more about that, definitely check that out. But again, we're just going to test out cloud gaming. Something you notice here compared to the others is it does have its own custom UI as well. And again, this, because this is running Android, you can also go to the traditional Android layout. But let's test out Google Stadia here and talk about some of the things I like and dislike about this. All right, so here we go. This is Destiny 2 running on the GPDXP. And something to notice right off the bat is how beautiful this display is. Again, if you watch my initial review, that is something I commented on a lot. I love how wide it is. The colors just pop out. And it's a very rich experience for sure. My biggest gripe with this is that it doesn't have analog triggers, but I feel like the triggers are very responsive and very snappy. This is the only device that has your traditional Xbox controller button layout. But again, with the Odin, you can switch it to match with the custom UI. And something to take into consideration, if you are looking to cloud gaming on the go, this has a SIM card slot to where you not need and to depend on your phone Wi-Fi. You can just put your SIM card in there and game with this on the go. So when it comes to cloud gaming, this is really, really good. This also feels really good in the hand and the analog sticks are very responsive. At first, I thought they were floaty, but the more you play with it, the more you start appreciating it. I actually prefer this analog over the Odin's. My biggest gripe with this is the price point. If this can be anywhere at $250, I would highly recommend this device. But I've tested all of the cloud game platform on here. Again, you can watch the initial review, but it runs all of them pretty well. With Amazon Luna, you have to go to the traditional Android UI to get it to work, but it does work as well. All right, so this is the Arbonic. And I have to say, when it comes to cloud gaming, this runs. But this is probably my least favorite experience. The reason being is the button layout. The two analog sticks down here makes it difficult to play and hold and grip. This device is great for emulators if that's what you plan on playing. But you can see, imagine doing this for multiple hours. It cramps up a lot. But you've seen here, this is definitely playable. If this is the only device that you have, it's, it's definitely playable. But then I'll show you my other gripe with this. The R2 button is here and the L2 button is here. So if you're playing an FPS like this, look at this reach. You, you you almost cannot reach the analog stick if you're trying to aim. And if you're trying to fire, you have to press this. Now, picture doing this for hours right here. Talk about like an uncomfortable way to play. But like I stated, if you are just using this for emulators, would highly recommend it.
And then my other gripe is that this has a Nintendo Switch button layout. With the Odin, you can change it and the GPDXP has normal buttons. So this becomes annoying. And then when comparing this to the other devices, this is heavy. I don't know why, but you can see it's like a brick, right? It's just like a square brick. So holding in the hands feels very heavy, feels very uncomfortable. I would just say, I honestly cannot recommend this device, especially for the price point when it comes to cloud gaming. All I can say is if you own this device already for emulation and you want to cloud game, it's doable. But as far as this being your primary cloud gaming device, I mean, you pay money just to use this to cloud game, would not recommend this. All right, fellas, so there you have it. This is my review comparing these three devices. They are decent devices when it comes to cloud gaming, but they all have the pros and cons. The best bang for your buck, I would definitely choose the old and this comes on top. The price point is great. The custom UI is awesome. The weight is incredible and the screen and the display is just brilliant. This probably would have been my number one if it was priced right, but it's really expensive. To be fair, when the Odin becomes a retail product, it is going to be priced similar to this. So for 341 bucks, I think this is way too expensive. But again, it has a lot of things that I do like about it. The display is incredible. It is the only one out of the three with a normal Xbox button layout, and it feels really good in the hand to play. As far as the Arvinic, when it comes to cloud gaming, if this is the only device you own, let me say you bought it for emulation, yes, maybe consider cloud gaming on it. But if you're thinking about buying this device just to cloud game alone, I would not recommend this. So fellas, that is all I have for you guys today. Hopefully this review was helpful when it comes to using these devices to cloud game. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Appreciate you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Till next time, peace out.